This is Sean Shaw with Dinner and Dialogue with yet another episode. I know it's been a while, so we had to take some time to really understand a little bit more about what we wanted to do, who we wanted to reach out to, and I thought it would be great since I've always reached out to someone in front of the camera. It might be a good idea to kind of reach out and find someone that would be of uh, dinner dialogue worthy to talk a little bit about what goes on behind the camera, who makes the people look the way they do. So I reached out to Mr. Lawrence Davis. Uh, Mr. Lawrence Davis, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for, for taking me. time out to speak to us here at Dinner and Dialogue. It's a pleasure. Uh, you've been around in the business for quite some time. I understand. Yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> Most recently you've done some work on, uh, on Greenleaf and Bessie. Bessie. Uh, Greenleaf. Which you've, yeah. uh, I wish you won a uh, one of those trophies. Well, actually, I didn't. <laughs> I was nominated for Bessie. I didn't win for Bessie, but I won uh, this year for Hairspray Live. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes and yes, I yes. won years ago for uh, Tyra Banks. Oh okay, nice, 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 nice. So how was it working with Tyra? I mean, she's like um, a mogul and all right. Wonderful. Um, I met her through another hairstylist who I uh, used to work with in LA, mm -hmm. and. Um, started working for the talk show and then started working for her and it just went on from there and you know, she's been a client ever since. Okay, so do you prefer talk show television or do you prefer you know, like shows I, like you do now? I think everything has its season. When I okay. was on the talk show I loved it. I loved that whole daytime thing and it felt like a nine to five and in this industry um, a nine to five is a nine to five schedule. It's hard to come by. It's usually a 12 to 16 hour day, but I love that whole thing when I was there. Um, but I also like going into episodic and living in that world for a while. And I also like uh, uh, motion pictures. Okay. Um, episodic to me is, uh, it's, of course, it's a whole other world, but it's, yeah. a, it's a little bit uh, grueling. Yeah. It's a I, long day and sometimes long nights. Yeah, because do you shoot? multiple episodes and multiple shows some shows months. I've worked on we've shot uh, more than one episode at a time which okay. can be really grueling because you have two or three units going on at the same time and you have to be in one place and then you have an actor on this particular unit so you have to go over there so it's a lot of juggling back and forth but I think that um, I think episodic out, out of all is the most challenging okay yeah. okay I can imagine I can imagine yeah. now is there one particular genre you prefer as far as like movies or television shows? Yes, I actually prefer period movies. Okay. I love period. Um, I would say 1930s and 40s are my favorite. Wow, okay. Um, the one that I'm presently doing uh, with Mahershala Ali is 1962. Okay, yeah. And I love that as well. So yeah. anything, I would say anything that period is, is, is definitely something I'm going to be passionate about. Okay, okay. And I, I can probably imagine that because as I did a little bit of research, it seems that a lot of hairstyles are, you know, it's cyclical. Yes. You know, they come back. They you know, do. like the pixie cuts and the things of that nature. Absolutely. I don't know if the high bun from the 1800s will, will come back or not. <laughs> but, I don't think it will. But in the fashion world, it might. You You're right. Know. In the fashion world, but... Um, in everyday life, probably not. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Probably not. Is there a like go-to hairstyle that you like? Okay, this is the hairstyle I can always count on. It's easy when you're kind of caught in a rut. You know what? I think uh, in a woman's in the woman's uh, world, I think a layered cut is always the best. Okay. If it's shoulder length, chopping a little bit of movement into it, um, it's it has been the most flexible hairstyle for me in this industry period okay and it always seems to every woman that I've worked with always seems to like it okay when it's you know it's that I won't say it's that go-to but it's that it's that comfortable uh, anybody can wear it doesn't matter what age you are okay it's that style okay now is it uh, actress in particular that you have you know cut their hair that way or style their hair that way where it's like Oh wow! It it looks better than I could have imagined. And they um, there are a few actually. Um, in the in the film and television world, there's a lot of wig work. Okay. So there are a few clients that I've worked with that um, you know 
they'll send a wig over and say, what can you do with this? Wow. And that particular cut, you know, that layered cut is always the safe way to go. Okay. You know, it still has length to it, but you put movement and you put uh, texture into it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect for any female in their world. <laughs> okay. In the television and in film world, should I say. But in their own life, I have a few that will wear the same, you know, the same type of wig or the same type of style. Right. In their own personal life. Right. Yeah. Well, being that you worked with a lot of people in the industry, you know, mainly in television and film, mm -hmm. have you ever decided or ever thought of getting into it yourself? I mean, acting. I mean, yes, acting, and you know, coming behind from behind the camera into front of the camera. And you know what? That's an interesting question because um, this year alone, that has been on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, Writing in particular has appealed to me. I've okay. been thinking about it for a long time, and I thought to myself, you know, if I can think of these things, I can write them. Because right. I was a little intimidated by the thought of it and thinking that I wasn't capable of doing it. But uh, I've spoken to a few people, and I've shared some of the projects that I've started with a few people, and they're like, that's really good. So okay. I kind of broke that wall down, and I've, I've got myself into writing. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. Is there particular type of um, show a movie action one, drama one in particular is a drama okay um, that's based on a neighborhood in my hometown Baltimore Maryland oh yeah there's okay. an area called Bolton Hill which is a beautiful area that's um, mostly old uh, brownstones okay and I remember looking at this area when I was a kid you know, driving by and walking by it seemed like this one neighborhood with this invisible wall mm -hmm. that I felt like I could not walk through. Okay. So I wound up living in that neighborhood uh, as an adult mm. before I moved to California. And I loved it, of course, but the drama is based on a family that lives in that neighborhood. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So we'll see where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> but the acting part, I actually have thought about that as well. Um, a lot of times, you know, in the hair and makeup trailer, the actors are reading their lines, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll go, can you do my lines with me? So, ah. you become one of the characters in the right. show, right, right, right. because you're reading lines with them. And I remember one particular actress said, oh, you're good. And I was like, really, am I? <laughs> so, jokingly, I said that, but she was serious, and I was okay. like, you know what? I, I think I'll try it to myself. Right, right. But I have never auditioned for anything or... Um, express an interest to anybody in particular, but I think I would love to do it. Until now. Until now. Dinner and dialogue Until will bring now. it out. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Until now. Okay. But yeah, I think I would love to get into it. Okay. Awesome. Now, do you, do you cook at all? I do. Oh, nice. Thank okay, you, you said that pretty confidently. <laughs> I mean, some, usually some people say, well, you know, I do a little bit, no, you know, I whatever. Do. You know, when I do, when I have time, I love okay. to cook when I have time. Okay. Do you have a... Uh, specialty or favorite dish? Well, I only eat fish and, and shrimp, you know, seafood. I don't okay. eat meat, so um, I love salmon and I love trout. Okay. Yeah, and I All do right. pretty good. You do pretty good. Do pretty good. Or if you do say so yourself, okay. I do say so All right. myself. All right. Salmon and trout are my favorites and I do well. Okay. Now, is there a special way that you make it? Or you do a cake um, I always, or black? I always, um, well, I kind of experiment with the seasonings. Uh, one of my favorite things to do there's a rice seasoning actually that you put on uh, Asian food. There's a rice seasoning that a lot of people use, uh, but I use it on fish. Mm -hmm. And I also love uh, I love using Korean barbecue sauces and blacking, blackening, and curry. I experiment a lot. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. So there, there. Are, those are my favorite dishes. Anything, any, any type of fish, I'm, I'm for it. One of the movies that I have out right now is Mudbound, okay. that I did with uh, D. Reese last summer. Um, one of the greatest challenges, physical challenges I've ever had in this industry. Because we were filming in Louisiana, uh, about 100 to 104 degrees almost oh, wow. every day. Wow. wow. We would go in basically at almost the hottest part of the day, about 11, 12 and worked about three or four in the morning every day. Um, 
on a plantation, a sugarcane plantation in the middle okay. of nowhere. Okay. So, you know, those things can be challenging, but when you have a story that you know is going to touch somebody's life, um, you want to be a part of it. You want right. to be a part of the project. Yeah. And that particular project was uh, period piece, 19, late 30s, 40s. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's Carrie Mulligan, Mary J. Blige, Jason Mitchell, Jason Clark, and Garrett Hedlum. Oh, wow. I had all of them to do. <laughs> huh. I did all of them. And um, it was one of those independent films that once you read it, you just wanted to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So when I saw where we were filming and I saw the little bit of uh, luxury that there was, yeah. you know, my mindset changed and I, I got into this mode where, you know, let's do this. Let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Um, I know some people probably would have quit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know people who would have said, hell no, I'm not going to do this. But right. you're passionate about the script and you know what you're seeing and you have... Uh, connection with the director and you know what he or she uh, requires and why they brought you on it's because they believe in you first of all um, you just get this energy to want to produce a quality film um, authentic look um, and this film was very like I said it was physically challenging but um, there are some things that some people think are easy to achieve um, one is making a character look unkept. Right. It's a tricky thing because we beautify people. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we beautify. Right. And the hardest challenge for me was to make these women and these men look unkept. Okay. It's not an easy thing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, especially to see see Mary Jane. She really, really got what what I loved about it. She became the character. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on camera that says Mary J. Blige. There's no blonde hair. Okay. There's no wig. Okay. There are no fingernails, no eyelashes, nothing. And I remember the first day she came in for camera test. She came into the trailer and um, she's like, I'm not taking my wig off in front of these people. She was, <laughs> <laughs> she was not having it. She was not taking her wig off and I was like, okay. So kind of cleared it out. And after I think a week or two, Mary was coming into the trailer full on Afro. Okay. Natural hair, edges, everything. And I, she embraced that character. You know, once we talked about the authenticity of what Dee Reese wanted as, mm -hmm. as, as a director, Dee was like, I don't want a wig, I don't want any lashes, I don't want any nails, I want, I want Florence, I don't want Mary. Okay. So she embraced this and I love how she became unmarried. Right. She, natural hair, hair down to here, and I'm like, this is beautiful. All of this is beautiful, and it's you. It's all right. natural. Right. So, um, doing that film with her um, showed me that I had a little bit of, you know, influence in mm -hmm. bringing forth her comfort level of being stripped down from Mary J. Blige. Right. And turned into Florence Jackson. Nice. nice. Mother in the 1940s who lived on a farm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Show my world. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be. <laughs> okay. But she was this silent force, though. The character that she played was a silent force. Yeah. And when you see it, you don't see Mary at all. There's okay. nothing about her that's Mary. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it was just a wonderful project. And uh, I'm just glad that I, I could contribute. That's going to be like now, is there anybody in particular that you would just love to work with? Um, or get your hair in their mane, like, oh, that hair, that hair, you know? You know what? <laughs> there was, and it, it did happen, and it still does happen, and that's Miss Winfrey. Mm. You know, I wanted her as a client, and um, I had met her years ago at her show, and it actually happened. Right. It actually happened. And you know, when I moved away from L.A., there were a lot of things in my mind that I thought, all right, I'm moving to Atlanta. I'm still going to work in the industry, but I'll never get to do this person or that person. It was right. so not true. Yeah. It was so not true. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember getting the 
call Greenleaf. No, I'll, I'll back up. I remember getting a call one day. I was at home, and it was uh, somebody called from Tyler Perry's office, and they were like, Mr. Perry would like to come to his house and do um, a relative of his who's in town. And I was like, sure. Okay. So I get there, and it's Gail. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I introduce myself do Gail's hair. So as I'm finishing Gail, I'm thinking I'm finished, I hear someone coming down the hall and I look and it's Miss Winfrey. Oh wow. So they never told me who it was at all. So that was the first time I actually physically did her hair. So did you freak out? I mean you just say no, so cavalierly like I didn't freak Oprah out. walked out. <laughs> I didn't freak out because I've kind of gotten used to surprises in the industry. Okay, you just yeah. never know who's gonna walk into a room. You mm -hmm. never know. And so when I got there and it was Gail, um, and I heard the person walking down the hall, it just didn't, it didn't dawn on me that it would be Miss Winfrey, but when it was, I got it together and shook it off and, <laughs> and said, I can imagine. <laughs> Hi, Miss Winfrey, I met you before, blah, 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 nice to meet you again, blah, blah. But I'll tell you what I did, and this is because I just strongly believe in, ask for what you want. Right. I had this hairbrush that I bought that particular day, and I brought it in, and I wound up using that hairbrush on her. So, I was packing up my things, I had that hairbrush, and I put it in a Ziploc bag, packed it up in my kit. I got home, I took my kit out, I packed it, put my things in the garage, on the shelf, and I put that brush on the shelf, and I said, this is not the last time that I'm going to use this brush on her. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I'm going to use it and sell on eBay. <laughs> no, no. Not at all. Okay. But I said to myself, this is not the last time you're going to use this brush. This is Miss mm. Winfrey's brush. Mm. Mm. And cut to, a little while later, I get the call for Greenleaf. And I find out she's on the show. But I also thought, you know, she's got another hairstylist. She'll use her. So as we're getting ready to start shooting a few days before the show, um, she had her camera test. I got her ready for the camera test. Um, but still didn't know I was doing her. So then I get a call and they go, Miss Winfrey said you're doing her for the show. And I was like, no problem. <laughs> Absolutely problem. So that came forth. And then after we finished Green League that particular season, I get another call for the movie that she did, uh, Henrietta Lacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we understand you have a working relationship with Miss Winfrey. Um, She's requesting for this movie. I was like, absolutely. So it just started happening that way. Nice. And then while we were doing that movie, this particular day she was off. She wasn't working at all. And I was working because I was running the department also. So I was working and doing other people. Driving to work that particular morning, driving down 20 freeway, and my phone rings and it's a number I don't know. It's not even a number, it's just uh, unidentified. And I'm driving, I'm like, hello? Hey Lawrence, it's Oprah. And I'm like, hey Miss Winfrey. Wow. How are you? Wow. And I'm driving and I'm like, she's like, I'm good. What are you doing this weekend? And I'm like, nothing. Good. Can you go to New York with me and do me for the cover of O Magazine, my favorite things issue? And I'm like, yes, wow. yes, I can. Wow, wow. So after we hang up, and I'm like four or five exits going <laughs> lost. I'm like, what just happened? So, you know, I say that to say that she's that person who calls you personally. So, I get to New York, I mean, I, I get off the phone with her and then uh, her, her people call, uh, meet her at a plane, blah, 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 blah. There's a car coming, you know, just taking care of you 100%. Right. So, I get to her plane and uh, I'm like, I call Derek, Derek does her makeup. I'm like, Derek, um, where are you guys? We're not there yet. Go ahead and get on the plane. I was like, get on? I was like, get on. So I get onto her plane and I'm just like, just wow. scared to touch anything. <laughs> it's like this beautiful luxury, I don't know, I don't know what, flying hotel. Wow, wow. And so I'm just sitting there and finally they, they, they get there and I'm like, okay. So she comes up for it. And we go to New York and we do the cover of Old Magazine. Two weeks before that, I said to Derek, I said, you know what, I would love to do a photo shoot with Miss Winfrey. He never told her. He never told her. Mm -hmm. And she called and said, come, come do this. 
So it's like nice. I realized that you you give what you ask for. That's right. Specific, and you really want to do it. That's right. You give what you ask for. Yeah, ask for it all. Okay. It hasn't stopped. It's still calling. Personally, Miss Winfrey turned me on to Truffle Fest. Oh, I've been. Oh, I love Truffle. She travels. <laughs> she travels with it. <laughs> so in the morning. She went to Truffle Zest in the trailer while I'm getting her ready and she's like, taste this. I should say I have a bunch of it at home now. So you keep loving it down, yeah. So is it good, do you think? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Not only do I love seafood, but I also love Italian, so. Oh, okay. Perfect. So it's like... I'm already called. I'm already calling to come in next week. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. <laughs> You've been in the industry for, what, 17 years? Uh, 18, yes. Yeah. 17. In the film and television industry, 17 years. Okay. In the hair industry itself, about 25 years. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen an evolution of, you know, stylists. You know, it used to be hairdressers, I mean, they could still be called that, or, <laughs> you know, to stylists, to, to what, what they may be called in the next 10 years. Right. I know that it's predominantly been a female uh, type of industry, and it's, you know, male, men have been, you know, a part of this industry for, for some time now. Yeah. What have you seen has been your greatest challenge, if any, uh, in this industry being, being male? Actually, I haven't had any. Okay. I think that what sets guys apart is uh, that some women prefer male hairstylists. Okay. I don't know what or why, yeah. but I have got favor in that area. I have not had any bad experiences uh, or have anyone requesting a female stylist over a male stylist. I've been welcomed 100% for from uh, female female clients okay. that prefer a male. I, I have no idea why. Okay. It's just one of those things and uh, that has not been a challenge. I think the most challenge that I may have had is uh, having or doing a show that's 100% uh, female actresses. Okay. That can be challenging. I can imagine. That can be challenging because uh, not only is there, uh, oh, I played this, not only is there uh, insecurities, mm -hmm. but uh, there's this thing that happens where you become the therapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You become the therapist and you become the, the priest, you become the safety net. Uh, Kind of like in a barber shop. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. You get that same type of. You get the same type, type in, this, in this industry. And um, what I do is, you know, I give advice where it's asked, but I try and stay, I try and stay at a distance, yeah. you know. But yeah. um, you get actors and actresses in the morning, out of bed, straight out of the shower, as stripped down as possible. And it's not only that. Um, that thing that you see, but it's that inner thing also. You're right. vulnerable, and you get a lot of uh, you get poured out, a lot poured out on you. Right, and um, it can drain you. But yeah. you know, it's a part of the job. Yeah. It becomes a part of the job, and that that part a lot of people don't see or don't know. Because mm -hmm. um, we get them at three, four, five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and um, it's, it can be a challenge. Okay, because. Um, like I said, the insecurities and uh, uh, personal things in their lives and things like that, but I welcome the challenge. Okay, yeah. good, good. So how does doing what you do make you feel? Because, you know, I know certain people feel a certain way when they act, and I am a painter, so I paint, and I have a certain feeling when I paint. Right. It brings out certain emotions right. in you. Um, what type of feeling is it makes me feel really good because I know that when I read a script, because I do have to read the script also as a hairstylist, makeup, whatever, costumes, you got to read the script just like the actor. Okay. You got to go page by page and know exactly what's going on. 
with your actor. And if you're a department head, you got to know what's going on with all the actors. Right. So I think that reading something and executing it and bringing, bringing it forth and seeing it on the camera and seeing it on screen yeah. um, gives me kind of goosebumps because you see it on this huge screen, motion picture, uh, and it, it comes across the way it's supposed to. You know, if it's uh, modern day or if it's period, um, and it's working, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's like that deep breath I can finally take, like, 